Here we are faced with experimental information. We're told something about an experiment. We're told that we are given some data. We're being asked to calculate some fuel efficiency for so cars. And we are given some distances in miles. And we're giving the volume in gallons. And we're being asked to determine the average and standard deviation for fuel efficiency in units of miles per gallon. And also to report this efficiency in units of kilometers per liter and average and standard deviation. So, and we're given the conversion distance meters into miles and liters into gallons. All right, so before we build our spreadsheet, we're going to come up with what, I'm, what I call a lab calculation flowchart. Basically, I'm going to figure out exactly how I want to build my spreadsheet. I'm going to have all of my columns figured out before I even open up my, my spreadsheet. So I look at this and I say, okay, First thing I want to do is I want to think about what I'm given. I know I'm given I'm given volume in gallons and I'm given distances in units of miles. So those are going to be my data cells because those are actually going to be measured data. So I'm going to have a cell column. I'm going to have a column that's got the volume of gas in gallons and I'm going to have a column that's distance in miles because that's where that's where my data is going to be. Okay, so that's all the data that I'm given. All right. So the first thing I'm being asked is to calculate the fuel efficiency in units of miles per gallon. All right, well, I have a number that's got miles, and I got a number that's gallons. So if I want to get miles per gallon, I just need to take these two cells, and I take the numbers, those two numbers, and I just need to divide them, right? So... I'm going to take the distance and I'm going to take the volume and I'm going to do my magic and I'm going to get miles per gallon. All right, well, that's going to be a calculation cell. Okay, so over here on the right hand side, I'm going to kind of use my calculation cells. Okay, so that's the first thing. So the next thing I got to do is I got to get the efficiency in units of kilometers per liter. All right, so that's a distance per amount. I have my distance in miles, I need my distance in kilometers. I have my volume in gallons, and I need my volume in liters. Oh, well, there's my conversion factor, liters to gallons. So I know I can convert my gallons into liters, right? I can If I know the number of gallons, I can calculate the number of liters. I just need to know what that conversion factor is. Well, I know the conversion factor is 3.875 liters per gallon, right? Now, notice it's per how I did it. I did liters per gallon, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this 3.875 times gallons. So I got my volume in liters, and that's what I need my unit to be for my other one. But I'm in I'm in units of miles, and I need to be in kilometers. Oh, well, um, I can convert miles into meters. I've got that conversion factor right there. And then I can go from meters to kilometers. OK, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert my distance, and I, I'm going to calculate a distance. I'm going to calculate my distance in meters, and the way I do that is I need a conversion factor. I know meters per mile is 1609. Okay, that's cool. And then, okay, so I'm in meters and liters. Oh, no, I need to be in kilometers per liter. Okay, so I can convert distance from meters into kilometers because I know that K is a number that means 1,000. So now I'm in kilometers, I'm in liters. And now I can calculate my fuel efficiency. If I know the kilometers and liters, I just divide that, right? And another, another cell, right? So for each run of my, each run of my data, I'm going to have a distance in miles, a distance in gallons, and I do these calculations, and there will be my efficiency in miles per gallon. There will be my fuel efficiency in kilometers per liter. Okay, I think I've, I think I've got everything. I think I'm ready to start working on my spreadsheet. So now I'm in my spreadsheet. So I have my data cell. So here I've got my measured data. So I'm given volume in gallons. I'm given distance in miles. And I've got my blank spreadsheet. Everything else is blank, right? So I just copied over my, my lab calculation flowchart just because I had it. You would probably do it by hand. I'm not expecting you as your instructor for you to do it electronically. I would just do it electronically for the screencast. You'd just probably do it by hand. But we still need it sort of in front of us. So. One of the first things I want to do is I want to make very, very clear as to what cells are calculation cells and what cells are data cells. And the reason I want to is because I want to make sure that the only numbers, after I build my little calculator here, my spreadsheet, I want to make sure that the only numbers that I change are data cells. 
right, is I get more data. So I'm going to make, maybe highlight these and I'm going to make them all yellow to indicate that they are at just data cells. There are numbers that I put in. Every All the other numbers over here are calculation cells. And every calculation cell only has calculations in them. We never put numbers into a calculation cell. I'll explain why later. So now armed with my spreadsheet, I know that I need for each one of these boxes represents a column, right? So I knew that, oh, okay, for, so we need to get the fuel efficiency in kilometers per liter. I needed to know the volume in liters and the distance in kilometers. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so I need a column that says volume of gas in units of liters. I need a column that's distance in meters. I need a column that's distance in kilometers. So that's that's those three cells. And then lastly, my fuel efficiency in miles per gallon and my fuel efficiency efficiency no, it's not spelled right but I don't care in kilometers per liter okay so these are the the numbers that I'm being asked to determine miles per gallon and kilometers per liter so yep I have one two three four five six seven I got one two three four five six seven awesome I've got all of my titles. Now I just have to code them. All right. So to get from volume of, to go from, to get the volume of the gas in liters, I need my, I need this number. Here's my volume of gas. And I need to multiply it by this number. Okay. That's a constant. All of these have to, to for the number here, I have to multiply it by the same number. So I'm going to put it up here. This is going to be my constants up here. So I'm going to, the way I'm going to label it is I'm going to say liters per gallon. All right. And in this cell next to it, I'm going to put the number 3.875, right? That's an actual, it's an actual number. It's equal to that number. Spreadsheets, you can't put units or words in with any numbers in a spreadsheet because then it will just see it as a word. So if you ever want to use a number, the thing that's in that spreadsheet has to be a number, but we have to label it somehow. So up here, I sort of say, oh, okay, liters per gallon is 3.875. And while I'm up here, I know I'm going to need meters per mile meters per mile and the reason why I put poor per poor per I can't type meters per mile is 1609 right so there's my meters per mile so the reason why I write them like that is that when I'm coding my spreadsheet it's easy so if I click on my volume of gas so I want to take this cell so I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is I'm press equals and then I'm gonna click on this cell and it's gonna say B7 right so that means take the number in cell B7, and then I want to multiply it by this cell, my conversion factor, which is 3.875. Blink. And then I hit enter. All right? Now, we're not going to recode the cells all the time. We're not going to just write each one. We're going to copy and paste these formulas. Because there's no number up here, it's just a formula, the way the spreadsheet reads this, it doesn't say... B4 and E, B7 and E4, it reads this as go over two cells from where you are, grab that number, and then go over one cell and up four cell, grab that number, and divide them, right? These are cell calls. They're not numbers. They're cell calls. Whenever we are doing calculations, it, we should always reference actual cells. We should never put numbers in them. All the numbers should be seen. So I can hit control copy, highlight this, control copy, and then highlight all these cells and hit control paste and you'll see what happens so if i look here if i look the cell is b7 times e4 and when i went one cell down if i click there it says b8 e5 right so it's the relative positions i moved it down one both of the cells in my formula moved shifted down by one we want this cell to go over two 5.63, but we want to multiply it by the 3.875. So this is what's called a, a, an absolute cell. When we s tell this formula, go over 2, we want it to always, for all of these, we want it to always look in cell E4. We always want it to look there. So what we're going to do is, in our formula, 
instead of doing b7 times e4, we're going to put a dollar sign in front of the e and a dollar sign in front of the 4. It's not going to change. We're still going to get the same number. But now, when I copy and I go down and I hit paste, now you'll notice that in each case it's go over 2 and divide it by our constant. Here it says go over 2 and multiply it by our constant. So when we're copying and pasting, it doesn't change that cell. Right? We're going to do that whenever we use constant cells. Okay, so back to our calculation. So now we have our distance in liters. Our distance in liters. I'm sorry, distance. Our volume. V is for volume. Our volume in liters. And now we need our distance in meters. Okay, so according to my spreadsheet, the way I do that is I take the miles and I multiply it by the meters per mile. Okay, so I hit, I hit equals. I hit equals. I take the distance. I do an asterisk for multiply. I click on that. But I want to make sure it's constant. All right? So that's the distance to meters. I hit control copy. Paste. Awesome. Next thing I gotta do is distance in kilometers. Well, go from meters to kilometers. It's a thousand. Um oh I need the the constant cell I need is actually it's gotta be kilometers per meter, right? Because I want to multiply it, because it's easier that way. So there are 0 0.001 kilometers per meter. So now to go from meters to kilometers, I go into this formula, I go to my meters, and I hit star for multiply, and I click on kilometers per meter. I put, because the same thing, it's a, it's a constant cell, we always want it to go to that. And that's my kilometers, I control copy, and then paste. And again, if you look at the formula, it's go over one cell, let's go over to E10, go over to E10, and then take that number and multiply it by the constant E3. So all of these are always multiplied by, up here by E3. Okay, we're doing good, we're doing good. Now fuel efficiency is miles per gallon. So according to my little flowchart, I take the miles and the gallons and do what I need to do. So the miles per gallon, see, there's my miles. So I take that cell, divide by the gallons for that particular run. So C7 divided by B7, I hit enter. There's my fuel efficiency. Copy that formula, paste. Awesome. And then fuel efficiency in kilometers per liter. Well, I'm gonna take the kilometer distance and divide it by the volume in liters. So I'm gonna take, I say equals, distance in kilometers divided by volume in liters, hit enter, hit control copy, paste. And I'm done. I am absolutely done. These were the cells that I was asked to calculate. These, this is my sort of information. Now these cells here are sort of what are referred to as intermediate calculations. right? These weren't important for me because I was just given this and this to get these numbers. Are these numbers important for your audience? No, those are just sort of intermediate calculations for us. So we didn't have to, we didn't have to show them. So we can actually hide these, right? So if I click on this cell or this whole column and right click, I can hide the whole column, right? And you'll see this little double headed arrow. We can make, it's still there. It's still part of the calculation. No, it didn't change anything. We're just not looking at it, right? And we can make it come back by clicking on that double headed arrow, right? So we're gonna actually hide these three columns because we don't need them. But when we hide the column, you gotta hide the whole column. So we're gonna lose this information. So I'm gonna highlight those, hit control X to cut. Come over here and control um, V to paste. And notice we just move the numbers over, but all of the formulas updated. So now instead of before it was E5 and now it's, or E4, now it's H4. And that's okay. So now I can, hide those columns because I don't need them. So I go and hide columns. And there I have my completed spreadsheet. Now, of course, we have to look at significant figures. So I have to see this raw data. Again, it's yellow. Three significant figures, three significant figures. So my final answers can only be to three significant figures. So I go down to that and I'm done. A little bit of cleanup. Make sure everything looks nice. Check my significant figures. Complete.